After thousands of millennia of evolution, human beings have evolved to inhabit a shocking variety of climates. We have adapted to temperatures far beyond our normal variation in body temperature, which is in the range of 97 degrees Fahrenheit or 36.1 degrees Celsius to 99 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.2 degrees Celsius. This is due to the thermoregulatory function of the human body, which heats and cools the body as needed to keep the body functioning in this narrow range it is designed to work at, constantly establishing equilibrium. This may seem like a very limited range, but humans have always found a way to survive and even thrive in environments that are hostile to them. We can see this astonishing tendency to adapt on display in the city of Yakutsk, the capital city of the Sakha Republic in Russia. While Russian winters have always been harsh, Yakutsk sees some of the lowest temperatures on Earth, with an average of minus eight degrees Celsius, or 18 degrees Fahrenheit, and occasionally dipping as low as minus 53 degrees Celsius, or minus 63 degrees Fahrenheit. It sounds like an impossible city to live in, and yet people don't just survive here, they thrive. The city has a population of over 300,000 people. Mr. Nikolai, who is a resident of this city, has an incredible skill which he practices every day, taking an ice bath. He has done so every single day for the past 30 years and swears that even in the brutal cold of the city he lives in, it helps his body adapt and become stronger. <laughs> An ice bath is not something just everybody can do, and they probably shouldn't without proper precautions either. It takes grueling daily training. In this video, we see how even a trained professional has to take precautions to avoid cold shock, hypothermia, and even frostbite at the extremities. After manually digging the hole we see in the ground, we see him first wear gloves to keep his hands safe from the cold. It may sound odd, but your palms and soles are some of the key places that radiate body heat, hence this precaution. It is important to enter the ice bath while breathing calmly and regularly to avoid gasping, which in turn can precipitate cold shock. Nikolai is extremely calm and methodical, even as he floats in the icy waters that have already begun to freeze around him. He explains that it is important to relax to let the ice work its wonders on the body. He explains that the very word that they have for an ice bath means healing ice bath due to the effects it can have on the body. After he gets out of the cold water into what must feel like the colder air, he even takes a dip in the cold snow around him. He then finishes his ritual by taking a full dip in the icy waters again, taking off his walrus hat to do so. Once he gets out of his bath, he explains that it is essential to immediately put on warm clothes and exercise for a while after, so that the muscles of the body can regenerate the life-sustaining heat it needs. It is now known through research that this works, that ice baths indeed can be beneficial for the body. When the body is exposed to extreme cold, there is an immediate release of catecholamines from the adrenal glands, like epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are commonly called fight or flight hormones, and they help with the immediate management of the cold stimulus via vasoconstriction, which is the constriction of the blood vessels of the body, preventing heat loss. It also helps you feel alert due to the effect this has on the brain and increases dopamine levels in the brain. In some people, there may be as much as a 2.5 times increase in the levels of the neurotransmitter. Dopamine is commonly known to participate in the reward pathways in the brain and also give feelings of pleasure and a general sense of well-being. This effect is comparable to the Wim Hof breathing exercise, which has similar effects. Dr. Andrew Huberman, an American neuroscientist and professor at the Stanford University School of Medicine, has done extensive research on this topic and found that this kind of cortisol and catecholamine release response is very beneficial, aiding the body in fighting against infections. Where they brought in two groups, um, one group um, did Wim Hof breathing, the other group did just uh, mindful meditation. Both groups were injected with E. coli. Right? This is crazy. Right? This is crazy. Uh, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. The meditators got fever, diarrhea, and, and, um, and vomiting. And the people who did Wim Hof either didn't get it or got it to a much lesser extent. Sluggish. What most people don't realize about temperature regulation 
is that it is a dynamic process that maintains equilibrium. It protects the body from the two extremes of both hypothermia and hyperthermia. This complex system is incredibly fine-tuned, and it serves to protect not only local regions of your body from overheating and shutting down, but also on a global scale by maintaining the core body temperature. The body has excellent insulation. Body hair, the layers of the skin, subcutaneous fat, and muscles that make it incredibly difficult for the body to lose heat. This is why we have specialized areas of the body with hairless skin that serve as portals of heat loss by increasing local circulation. It is excess body temperature that can be an obstacle to muscle performance or even cognitive performance. So now, we can understand why it's important to know how to lose body heat, or rather, get better at taking advantage of our natural body functioning. Athletes especially can take advantage of this function of the body to enhance their performance. So the benefit of a cold bath or a cold shower before aerobic activity is that you increase the capacity of your body mass to absorb that excess heat. Just by losing some excess body heat with cold showers at the start of vigorous exercise can take them longer to reach their point of heat exhaustion, helping them get the most out of their sessions. Even small precautions, such as making sure not to have covered palms, or making sure to give themselves enough time to cool down from an exercise, as well as taking general precautions of staying hydrated and eating a healthy diet, can help an athlete boost their performance. Cold temperature has also been found to modulate body fat metabolism and deposition in human beings. You likely already know this. Not all fats are bad. There are two types of fat cells in the body. White fat cells, responsible for the storage of excess energy, and brown fat, which is responsible for thermoregulation by burning excess energy and participating in heat generation. Under intermittent exposure to cold temperature, white fat cells have been found to take on the characteristics of brown fat cells. The volume of brown fat cells in the body was found to have increased by a great margin. It even increased insulin sensitivity to some degree, which is protective against type 2 diabetes mellitus, or T2DM. This acclimatization to cold temperature and changes in glucose metabolism in the body via insulin can have profound implications for long-term health outcomes with regards to both the treatment of obesity and preventing the onset of T2DM. Cold temperature has also been found to have a direct effect on the immune system by increasing the circulating levels of disease-fighting components in the blood. Just after six weeks of repeated immersions in cold water, there was an increase in the plasma, or blood, concentrations of interleukins, and total circulating levels of the various types of T lymphocytes, and also activated T and B lymphocytes, the main agents through which the body fights new infections. This might be due to the stress-inducing but non-infectious nature of the cold temperature stimulus, increasing the metabolic rate of the body. The metabolic rate of the body was found to have risen due to the repeated stimulus of shivering immediately after exposure to the cold, but also due to the catecholamine spike directly activating the immune system. So something as simple as taking cold showers, in addition of course to regular precautions, can have an immune boosting effect on the body, which has become ever more relevant as the pandemic drags on. Hotter temperatures also directly affect the brain and hence the cognitive functions that the brain carries out. After long bouts of exercise, mm -hmm. or even just very intense bouts of exercise, feeling a kind of brain fog or mental fatigue, I, I assumed that that was due to lowered brain oxygenation post-exercise, but is it possible that there are some post-exercise effects on heating and cooling of the brain that might impact cognition? or I should say negatively impact cognition? It's certainly possible because we know that uh, a rise in temperature decreases cognitive capacity. This effect on cognition is either via a direct effect on neuronal functioning or indirectly by throttling glucose production in the brain, by acting on the enzymes responsible for producing this energy-giving molecule in the brain. High temperature has also been found to increase glucose consumption, so this acute glucose shortage in the brain can explain a lot of the cognitive symptoms seen in people due to heat. Complex cognitive tasks such as decision-making and pattern recognition may be affected in hot weather, making the task of cooling our brains ever more important. 
taking away this excess heat directly from the brain by drinking something cool or directly cooling areas near the brain can be majorly helpful when faced with complex cognitive tasks in difficult environments. This task will only get more difficult as the world heats up with global warming. Staying hydrated may soon be just as important as staying cool. Literally. While we are used to the climates we live in, exposure to the cold intermittently definitely has multiple benefits, as you've seen. While it doesn't have to be as extreme as taking ice baths in minus 50 degree weather, it can be as simple as learning to manage your body heat through diet, exercise, and daily routines. If you like this video and would like to learn more about topics related to your mind and body and the latest in scientific research, leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And turn on the notification bell so you don't miss a video.